Hi guys, in this video, we'll be talking about how to make use of the landing page builder on Seller. And precisely, I'll be explaining the tools available to build your sales page from scratch. So first of all, we'll have to go to our landing page builder, click on the hamburger icon, then navigate to landing pages. When you get here, you click on the create page button, then blank template. Here you input the details of your, of your page. Click on create page. Now almost immediately your landing page builder will open. Now on the left side of your screen, you come to component. Now in components, these are where the tools are available. You have containers, text, the icons, buttons, image and pictures. These are where all your tools are available. So for example, to make use of any of them, you just click on it and drag it to the screen. This is a text tool. If I click on the text, the options come out at the right. The edit options rather. The edit options come out at the right side of the page. So I can click on it here and change the text to Welcome to this tutorial. That's bad. Now, right here, you have the edit option, so you can change. Let's start from the beginning. This is a paragraph. That's what we call text paragraph. So, right here, you have a duplicating option. The option here duplicates the content. For example, if I click on this paragraph here and I click on it, it duplicates it. Whatever I have created, it duplicates it. Here is a parent, select parent option icon. When you click on this, it moves to the parent of the already highlighted content. If I click on this now, it goes up here. If I click on this one and I select the select parent, it goes to the next bigger one and the next bigger one. So the next one here is move up. It, this is just to move up around the page. It goes up. It moves the content up and down the page. And this is delete. So for text, you have the content. This is where you put in your, your text. Then you can decorate the text, put on the line in the text or nothing, or strike it. For like the old price and new prices. You can internalize it too. By putting it in italics. So I select the colors of the text here, yellow, pink, black. Then you can select the size. You can select the font width. You have normal, or bold, or very bold, extra bold. You can also align the, the position of the text to center or right. Then you can set the fonts available. You can change the font of your text to so, one of your choice. Now the link settings, the link settings. Now most of these settings edit functions are different depending on the tools you are using and working with. Now the top side of the tools here, from here to the top, most times differs between edit options, edit tools, within tools rather. But the 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 the, the, the lower part of this page of this edit options is almost the same thing. Let me reiterate that. Let me say that again. The top part of these edit options are, are different depending on the tools you are working with. But the lower part is almost the same thing. So, moving to the link settings. You click on the link settings here. They're saying that when they click on this link, on this text, I want it to become a link. I want the link to add again to an external URL by putting the URL here, or to another page, or to download the file. So, this is the link settings. Then padding. Now this is very important. Pay close attention. Padding is used to create space inside a content or a container. For example, I'm click I'm clicked on this paragraph, which is a text. If I add padding top to it, the space at the top. If I add padding bottom, the space at the bottom. Padding left, it moves to the right. Padding right, it takes back to the left. Do you understand? So padding creates space inside a content or item or container. Margin on the other hand creates space outside of that particular highlighted content or container. Now, margin top creates space at the top. You see this? It 
it created the space between this other container. Margin bottom create space below. Margin left moves it to the right, create space here. And margin right does the same thing too. So margin create space inside a content or container. Margin create space outside. Don't worry, next video will be creating pages so you can see how these things work together. The background settings you can create a color background for your text. Or you can, let me see. Or you cannot create an image background for text. You can only do that for a container. So that's basically all for text. Let's move back there. This is a different type of text, different fonts. This is a bigger text. This is a smaller text. This is a text with colors. So this is a container. Now, containers are one of the most important things in the landing page builder. We have two main containers. We have a row and we have a column. A container rather, a role and a container. Don't mind the names. So the role is used to move items around, position items in, in the page. Why a container is used to set the size of an item or a content. Let me say that again. A role is used to move items around to the beginning, to the left, whatever. Why a container is used to set the size of an item in relation to the screen. Now, if I want an item not to be more than 60% of the screen, I use a container. If I want an item to just be 20% of the screen, I use a container. If I want to move the right item from the right side to the left side or to the middle or to the top, I use a row. Now, let's see how that works. Let's say we're working with, let's duplicate this. Let's work with this same. We are putting this text in a roll and in a container. Where do you want going? So if I want this text not to be more than 20%, let's let's remove the padding that we've added already. The margin of the padding. Did we? Yes, we did. Zero, 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 zero. This as well. Nothing to zero. 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 Now to so work with this, I can move this. Um, all paragraph or all text to the right, to the end, or to the center. Now, for if I duplicate this to, to two items, you can see the difference. This one is stacking on each other. This is a container. Now, the rule can can either put it on a row, put the items on the row, or put them as a column. On a roll or a column. Now, what this does is it moves, it aligns the contents in a vertical, in a vertical way. That means start means the items will be up, container means, center means to be in the center, end means it will be at the end, at the bottom. But because this this roll is not so big, it's not set to be big, that's why you can really, can really work with that. But we are working with it, it means that if I put that start. The content to be at the top. Center means to put at the center, and it means to be at the bottom. Now, but justify items is used to set content to the beginning, center, and the end. Now you can't release it because this is the technology of space. But if I put it to column, you can see it better. Now working with this one as well, working with this text. This one. Like if, I, if, I want, if I don't want the text to be more than 20%, I just set the width of the container to I said 20%. So it does not go beyond it. But let's say make it 50%. For example, if you want to like put a text at the right and an image at the left, and you want them to be equal, you can just set the container to 50% here. So that's for that. So the other tools here, like um, buttons, buttons too as well. You have them. You have icons. Oh, it's not okay. okay. You have the icon option. You set the kind of icon you want to use. Set the size. Set the link. 
So the size, so the color here, yeah. the link in the margin. Also, you have um, image and videos. So image as well is best. Most of the time, it's best to put an image in the container so you can manage the size. Also, you can make, you can become an. You can set the width and the height, but that radius. You can give it the body radius so it's cut. You can see it's cut. The edges is cut. Same is with the video as well. The video too. Now note that the videos cannot be uploaded. You can only use a video with the link. Click on the video link. This is the link to the video. Then I have a Vimeo video or a YouTube video. You can say it's autoplay. You can change the thumbnail. The thumbnail is this picture. You can add another picture as you wish. Create the section, create the width and the height. You can change the height to the width to like 60% of the page. Now, if you want to set this video to the center, you just put it in a container or you put it in a row. So that I know I told you the role is used to set position of our content. If I put this video in a row, let's do let's do just that. Let's say let's say my image is here. Let's delete this container. So yeah, we want to put our image here. And set it to center. So you can see our image is in the center. Our our picture rather is in the center. You can do the same thing with an image too. Whatever content you want to set the center or to the right or to the left, you can align it with your row. So that's that works that. So you can click on the link and set the border padding as we discussed earlier. So other tools that are there are countdown, count up. Set the countdown. You can put the countdown in this in the container and in, in your row so you can put you can align it to the center. If I put this countdown in the in a row like this, you can set this to container and set it to the center. Center. So every other tools available here so you can work with them by the cursor. Cursor is a kind of like a slideshow for images this is very beautiful we can change the images to, to slides look at this is one slide it's another slide you can add more slide add the image and add the text you want to work with and that's the rest of that's the rest of the section padding margin background border radius so we have an opt-in form now, let's, let's work with an opt-in form. An opt-in form so is already in the container. You can put it in a row to set the position like we talked about. Put it in a row to set position it center or to the right. You can also set the, the, the size of this opt-in form. I thought this is a container. It's already in the container. You can see the container right here. This is the opt-in form. This is the container. These are text you can add on top. If you don't want to add text, you can just delete it. So set the size of the container to like forty percent. So it looks it looks nice. You can add it to a row. You can put it in a row to position it, like we've talked about. Let's drag the row there and drag it right inside. And set the row to center or to the end. Now I want to put an image here as you like. You put the, you put, the you put the container inside here and put an image in it. It works fine. So now this is very important as because you might want to generate the email or details of customers from your page. You can remove the phone number if you don't like it. Or leave it that way. So but you must have integrated your seller to an image service such as Mailchimp, Convert Kit, and Sound Send Post. These are the email services that are that can be integrated to seller as of now. So if you integrate it, once you've been integrated your email service to your seller account, you click on it. So it loads up your list and your tags. This is my list. Then the tag, it's a tag, I can add more tags to it. So what it does is, whenever they put in their details here and clicks on it, it sends the details to my 
no cheap account. In my testing a customer tag, you send their email to the stats that I have here already. So what happens when they click? Do I want to direct them to like a thank you page which I've created already? Or I just want it to show success? It's fine. So that I'll be set. So this is how people collect from. Our next video will be talking about how to create a email opt-in form. So that will be making use of this particular form. So other tools include um, accordion. Accordion is like an FAQ, FAQ option. Putting the options here, the answers and the questions. Question here, answer here. So it's basically very simple. Something you can, I'm sure you can really, really do. So progress bars. If you want to load 20%, 10%, and all that. So you can just edit it here. Set the color, set the size, the height. So one other thing I would like us to talk about is the way we talked about the just like the form buttons as well. You have buttons here, yes. Okay. If you have like um, for most of us, we want to use our sales page to sell a product, basically. So maybe you have a um, you have a, a call to action option whereby you say buy this product, click here to buy. You want to you want to link your buttons to your sales page to your seller account, pardon me. So when I when you click on the button that says buy here or click here to buy, it takes them to your seller account. So what you want to do is click on the button and scroll to the link settings like we talked about earlier. You put it to URL and put in your product link or your store link, depending on what you're promoting. Right here. So when you do that, so whenever they click on the button, it takes them directly to your store. So this, these are the tools you can use to create a great sales page on seller. On subsequent videos, I'll be, we'll be working, out, working our way through how to create a sales page. With example, so that we can further familiarize ourselves with the landing page builder. Thank you very much.